it's me, Linda Lee, and since we're in quarantine and Hollywood's been shut down, there's no red carpets and no press junkets. So for now, we've had to do our celebrity interviews online. Today, I'm chatting with some of the cast and crew of the new Lionsgate movie, Think Like a Dog. In this heartwarming family comedy, a 12-year-old boy named Oliver conducts a mind-reading science experiment, which gives him the ability to hear the thoughts of his funny and furry friend, Henry, his dog. Uh, I can hear what you're thinking. You can't be hearing what I'm thinking. Yes, I can, Henry. Okay, what's two plus two? Four. This unique experience creates even a stronger bond between the two of them as they work together to help Oliver out with building up his confidence, asking out a girl that he likes, and even attempting to save his parents' marriage. Think Like a Dog is now available on digital, on demand, on Blu-ray, and DVD. First up, we're chatting with Gabriel Bateman, who plays Oliver in the movie. I heard that he had an incredibly close bond with the dog who played Henry, so I wanted to ask him how hard it was to say goodbye when filming was over. Hi. Hi. I loved the movie so much. I was crying for a lot of it because it was just, it was happy tears and then like sad tears. It was just incredible and I loved it so much. Good job. So you said that you had such a strong bond with Henry. So on the last day of filming, what was the experience like having to say, say goodbye to all the cast, but also having to say goodbye to Henry? It's always really hard when you have to uh, say goodbye to everyone um, on set because like at the end of it, you're really a family because you're working together, but especially if, if it's a taxing film, like this one was kind of emotionally taxing at times. Um, it forces you to bond with everyone around you. So um, it's never easy, but I just like to think of it as you'll probably see them again. Like I've seen a lot of the same people since I filmed. Um, so it, I don't really think of it as like goodbye, which makes it easier. Um, but especially saying goodbye to to JC and all the other dogs and all the trainers was, was really difficult because again, I, we formed such a special bond and I, I haven't really had anything similar to it in any other project I've done. It was honestly like having to say goodbye to my own dog, which would obviously be hard. So it was definitely hard, but I'm sure I'll probably work with a lot of the same people again, and hopefully Jason. Yeah, hopefully. Next, we spoke with Gil Junger, the writer and director of the movie. And he certainly had his hands full with this movie since it had both kids and animals. And in Hollywood, projects with both of those things can be quite the challenge. So, Gil, so they say that in Hollywood to never work with kids and animals, and you had both in this movie. So, which were like which was the most difficult to work with? Gabe has a bad attitude. He's a very angry kid. And I didn't know he's also a professional knife thrower and has a gambling problem. You know, I I have to say, I, you know, clearly you can get that I'm out of my mind for Gabriel. I mean, I, I literally, not that I, I wish I discovered him because he already had a full career before me. I, I don't know. I, I just kind of felt like I did when I cast Heath Ledger. I thought, oh my God, this is such a smart, talented guy. Nothing would make me happier than having the pleasure of your company. Cut! <sighs> How did that feel to you? He just brought me a tremendous amount of joy and pride and also made me so happy that the words and the thoughts that I was able to write down, his delivery of everything was, I was constantly stunned by this young man's abilities. It's the truth. How many of you understand this play? I mean, really get it? No. Do you understand it? Of course I do, I'm teaching it. Are you? I don't think anyone here really gets it. Um, as I've said, you know, the dogs were ridiculous. I would hire Sarah tomorrow if I had a movie. But, you know, obviously I form a, a more powerful connection with a human being. I've never felt this, <laughs> this grown up. Pretty soon you'll be shaving, driving, kissing girls. Still gross. Yeah, it was just the double whammy for me. I was, feel, felt very lucky every day. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Have a good day, guys. Bye, thank you. Finally, I got a chance to talk with Sarah Clifford, a talented and well-respected animal trainer in Hollywood. For Think Like a Dog, she trained all the dogs you see on camera in the movie, which must be fun, but also
also a very challenging job. Like with actors, I assume that animals have off days as well, and just like my dog, who just walked away. Uh, anyways, I was curious to see how she handled it when a dog just didn't want to play along on set during their scenes. Were some days, like, so you had like three dogs, um, and were some of the days when you were filming, like, the dogs just didn't cooperate? Like, what, what do you do when that happens? Well, that's a good question. Um, yeah, well, we had three dogs playing Henry, but I actually um, brought 10 dogs with me to Louisiana from California. And we were there for a couple months. You know, there were definitely times where the dog gets a little bit tired. Um, and, and in that circumstance, you can't ever make a dog do something that it doesn't want to do. So, you know, sometimes we would switch Henry's. That's why you have multiple dogs. Um, if one is just, you know, um, not good at that particular task or scene, then you can always use another one, you know, if um, that's always an option why you have to have multiple dogs. But a lot of it comes down to the trainers working the dog and knowing, you know, how to get the best performance out of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's what makes an animal trainer, you know, professional animal trainer is that we know how to motivate them to perform, whether it's bringing our energy up, you know, like if they're, you know, kind of tired and we kind of use that high baby voice, you know, that we use toward dogs and get a little more, you know, get a toy that they're really excited about. Sometimes we'll use like a hotter form of treats like chicken or steak or something like that. So all of those things are like the tricks of the trade to motivate dogs. Do you understand me? I do. Do you? And if there ever is a time they're not wanting to do it, then we don't mean to do it. We ju I just tell the director, um, I'm sorry, the dog needs a rest. And everybody just has to wait, you know, because you can't make them do anything they don't want to do. <laughs> Thank you for your uh, question. Thank you. Have a good day. And there you go. Thanks to Lionsgate for the chance to interview some of the cast and crew of Think Like a Dog, which is now available on digital, on demand, and on Blu-ray DVD. And special thanks to Gabriel Bateman, Gil Junger and Sarah Clifford for chatting with me. I think I'm gonna show my dog Daphne in the movie. I wish I could know what you're thinking. Oh, well, I want a snack, and I love to go for a walk. Oh, and I love my belly rubbed. Oh boy, you gotta be careful what you wish for. On the scene here at home, I'm Linda Lee. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>